We're live at Madco Lab Studios, and this is the Spokane Small Business Entrepreneurs Group. And now we're talking with Jason War, a local Spokane up and coming artist. So let's give Jason a round of applause. <laughs> and everybody's wearing hats today. <laughs> so, Jason, how long have you lived in Spokane? So I moved to Spokane almost two years ago. I lived right across the border in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho for over 17 years. So about a half hour east from here. So in the area for about 20 years or so. So you're, you're basically a native local? Yeah, at this point, yeah. <laughs> How did you get started being an artist? So I've always loved art my whole life. My very first like experience with like a formal art training or anything like that was a cartooning class for a summer camp when I was a little kid. My parents used to send us to different summer camps for sports and stuff, and I wanted to sign up for a cartooning class. And so it was taught by one of the local community colleges and just started doing cartooning. It was, you know, it was like probably like six or seven years old or so and got hooked on it. I, I absolutely love it. it it's, it's been a passion of mine ever since. It was, I mean, I started out when I was a little kid, I used to do a lot of like spray painting and you know, big murals and stuff like that. And you know, over time, I, I obviously don't commit acts of vandalism. <laughs> so I'm sure you're making the world a more beautiful place. Yeah, even de so. De definitely love working on canvas a lot better. And uh, yeah, I've just been, it's been a passion of mine my whole life. It's one of those things that it, it's just to, to be able I do it for therapeutic reasons. You know, I do it because I love it. I do it because my passion. It's just convenient that sometimes people pay me for it. So um, <laughs> that works out too. So but yeah, I, it's one of those things that's always been my go-to. You know, if I'm stressed out, I create art. If I'm happy, I create art. If I'm feeling blah and unmotivated, I create art to give myself motivation. You know, it, it's one of those things that regardless of what mindset I'm in or what I'm going through or if I'm stressed out, I create art from like a feeling, you know, I think a lot of people, I like, I want to create something that's visually interesting. So like it, I want people to think that it's interesting that, and that sort of thing, but it's more, I'm not creating things out of a thought. I'm creating things out of a feeling. And if I can connect with somebody on a feeling, you know, somebody can look at a piece of art and say, you know what? I just, I empathize with that. You know, I, I can relate to that. I can connect with that on like a personal level. For me, that is so rewarding to be able to connect with so many people just through visual art. And so it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I, I do it for myself, but it's also one of those things where it's like I've developed amazing, amazing relationships and connections with people from all over the country, all over the world. You know, I've shipped art to New Zealand and all over the country. And like, it's just one of those things that I just love it. I love it. It's my passion. And it's, it's something that is a coping mechanism, but it's one of the healthiest things that I can do when I'm feeling stressed out or dealing with any sort of issue like that. So, um, but yeah, I just love it. And it's, it's been my passion ever since I was a little kid. It's just one. And, and when I was a little kid, it was more like, I didn't necessarily grew up in like the most healthy environment, so to say, like I'm sure a lot of people don't, but it was my escape. You know, I can escape the, the world that I'm existing in and I get to truly live and thrive on what I'm drawing on paper, when I'm painting mm -hmm. on a canvas or, and uh, that becomes my reality for that moment. It's my escape from that, you know, and it, and, and that's kind of how it started and how I became like addicted to art. <laughs> And, and so, yeah, I'm just, it's one of those things that the reasons why I do it has evolved over time, but the passion and the, the love for it has just been constant ever since I was a little kid. Let's pick up on the coping part. So speaking as a ADHD person myself, <laughs> I was inspired by, by what you had to say about that earlier. So. How does, how has that affected your art and your experience of creating art? So, like I said, I, 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 if I'm stressed out, I'll create something that kind of resembles that. If I'm, if I'm joyous, I want to create a piece that's joyous. It feels joyous when it comes to the, like the ADHD portion of it. When people ask me what kind of art do I create, it's, it's, I don't really have like a specific niche that I fit into. Because I'll with ADHD, I'll I'll do 
four or five pieces in a certain style and then go completely different in a different style for two to three pieces and kind of hop around. I love experimenting with different techniques, different materials, different concepts, and different feelings, you know, different thoughts, you know, that sort of thing. And so it's, I, I abstract surrealism, cubism. I like, I love experimenting with a whole bunch of different things. And, and I, and I find the value in so many different types of art. And so it's, I mean, here at MAD, there's a whole bunch of different types of art that they have on display. And it's just really cool that I get to see, like, I can look at so many pieces in here that I don't know the artist, but I can connect with them through their pieces. And, you know, and, and when somebody gets to connect with my pieces through that, connect with me through those pieces it's just a beautiful thing so i'm i absolutely love it so who are some of your favorite influences i don't really i mean like there's i mean it was really cool like my wife and i went to vienna austria and got to look at like for a like a late honeymoon a few years back and we got to look at like some original Monet's and some original Picasso's and some of the classical stuff is really beautiful and interesting and thought provoking and that sort of thing. But a lot of it's like literally as simple as like nowadays with social media, there's so much content out there that I'll just get hooked on like watching streams of videos, like little video clips of different artists. And I mean, there's, I mean, it's so beautiful that it, it, there, there's so much art accessible, regardless of what your style is or your, your preferences, there's just so much of it out there. And so it, it, it's, it inspires me when I like, I, I, I can see something, see an artist do something. I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that was possible on a canvas. And, and it might be like their like second or third painting they've ever done that posted online. And so it's just, it's really cool that there's so much art accessible. And it, I, I draw inspiration from everything. Um, so it's in a, like, literally like my favorite artist is my three-year-old son. <laughs> you know, he, he created his first painting when he was less than six months old. He sold his first two art pieces in the last month. A couple prints that he did, or prints of a couple of his, or two prints of a painting he did. And he's three years old. And it's, it's so cool because like I get to like, have that experience with my son and have those memories captured on canvas for the rest of our lives. And it's so cool because I'll have like in our house, we'll have like one of my paintings and then, you know, one of his paintings will kind of alternate and like down in my office that I have down in our house, I've got his very first painting he ever did. And I've got like a couple of pieces of his artwork and I absolutely love being a dad. And so my favorite artist isn't, like one of the classics it isn't me even it's nothing like that it's the art that my three-year-old son creates and how i get to connect with him like that you know he says where are you going i said well, i'm going to go paint can i come too can i come too you know and i give him a little canvas and he just messes around with it or just takes chalk to it or whatever but art gives me the opportunity to create memories with my son that are just beautiful and they mean the world to me so yeah i would definitely have to say you know, my three-year-old son, Jagger, is my favorite artist, so. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful answer. Do we have any questions from our live studio audience? Stephen? Yeah, so you, you mentioned kind of experimenting with materials and different concepts. What's the recent experiment that you've done that you really enjoyed? So... Like I, I used to do a lot of like graffiti tagging and that sort of thing. And so I've worked with spray paint my whole life, basically, ever since I was a little kid. And so one thing that I've really enjoyed doing is using spray painting as a background. So I work with a lot of acrylics. Exactly. I work with a lot of acrylics and like that one, the background is spray painted. And so a cool thing that you can do with spray paint is... So say if I sketch something out and I, I don't like it, I might just paint over the whole thing or I might just, or say the what I'm trying to do is centered the way I want it to be or whatever it may be. I found that if I use spray paint as a background, I can take chalk to it 
and I can sketch out in chalk on spray paint what I want to have done. And if I don't like it, I don't waste a bunch of paint and that sort of thing. I can literally just take a, you know, a wet paper towel, wipe it off and start back over. And so sometimes I might sketch out in chalk on spray paint like three or four or five different times until I find something that I like. Or maybe I had an envision. I'm like, I wanted to do this on this canvas. But then I realized like the structure of the canvas, the dimensions don't look right for that design. And I get to just wipe it away and then start over without wasting a canvas or wasting any paint. And I just love that the, the different techniques that you can do with spray paint on, as far as backgrounds go. And so um, that's what I've been doing a lot of it. A lot of lately, I've been doing a lot of spray painting backgrounds and then acrylic over the top of it with using the chalk as, you know, uh, a, a, like an outline, essentially, so to say the contour lines of what I'm trying to do and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's just one of the things I've been doing a lot recently and I've really enjoyed doing it and it seems to be working well. So yeah. Thank you. Do, do you, do you have a website? So I have, or a uh, Facebook page or how, yeah. do, how do people find you? Yeah. So I post on social media at war paint by Jason. That's war is my last name. W a R R paint by Jason. I've got, it's at War Paint by Jason on Instagram, Facebook. You can find War Paint by Jason. I've got an Etsy page that has most of my available pieces on there as well. But yeah, oh, and TikTok. I've got at War Paint by Jason on TikTok as well. I do a lot of like, I'm trying to remember to record myself when I'm doing artwork um, because video content is so important. And so I'll do like little clips of me creating a piece or even like a time lapse of me creating a piece. And then post it to, to TikTok or one of the other social media platforms. But yeah, at War Paint by Jason is pretty much all my stuff. Right on. We'll be sure to have your contact information in the liner notes for that video. Awesome. Meaning this video. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You're, you're a total inspiration, and the work that you do makes a big difference. So thanks for bringing it here today and sharing your story. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. And thank, thanks to our live studio audience for being here. Thanks to Morgan for setting up Jason. Thanks for clapping. Thanks for being awesome. You make a difference. And if you're watching this video, please take a minute to share it. It's about bringing more attention to Jason and the work that he does and to any of the people that we interview. So thanks for being a part of it from you at home. And see you next week at 4.30 p.m. at Mad Collab Studios for the Lilac City Lounge. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.